Welcome to another episode of Ace Attorney Dual Destinies. The last time I played this was a few weeks ago, so I don't remember where I left off, but I'm pretty sure we're still in the first case because I am taking my sweet, sweet time with this, evidently. I didn't even want to be here today. So we're just going to jump into it and we'll figure out where we left off. I know we had done a little bit after Apollo, we found Apollo um, dead on the floor or something. Is this like right after or is this... We discussed the, the blood on the floor, right? That was wiped off? Oh, stop staring at me with those beady eyes. I get judged enough as is in life. <laughs> Mr. Tonic, I'm afraid we have a few more questions for you. I understand the situation, Your Honor. I was keeping a close eye on the proceedings from the gallery. The allegations are all laughable. Ha 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 ha. Yo, what up, Nick? It's so good to see your handsome, beautiful face. I wouldn't be laughing if I were you, Mr. Tonate. The message in the blood matches your ID number. Wow. Graphics. The same ID number that is there on that bomb transport case. Such a far fetched theory. No better than a tangled ball of wires. I'll have them untangled for you in no time at all. You were the first person on the scene after Detective Arm left her message in blood. You were the only one who could have hidden the writing and then used it again later. I see, I see. Or, or rather, I see X2. I guess he's too good to say I, the second I see. But then, let me ask you. Do you have any proof that Detective Arm wrote that message? That's a very good question. Well, do you, Mr. Wright? Do you? Do you, nerd? The best way to prove that Detective Arm wrote that message is to... Both could work, right? Handwriting analysis is never really all that accurate, though. What about the DNA? Your Honor, I request that a DNA test be performed on the blood itself. Once we know who it is, it will be obvious as to who wrote the message. Very well. Bailiff! Please put in a request for a DNA test with the forensics team. Yes, your honor. Oh, so was that the right answer? Because I'm pretty sure uh, we know that we have like access to her blood because she bled from her head. I mean, we'd have access to her blood regardless because she's dead, but you know. It will be some time before we have the result of the analysis. Until then, let's hear more from the witness. I would like nothing more, your honor. I want the court to hear how ridiculous the defense's theory is. Ah, but if it's not ridiculous, then it's not Phoenix Wright's theory. I admit I was the first one on the scene after the explosion, but there was no bloody writing there at the time. Anyway, there is no way Detective Arm could have written it. She struck her head on rubble and died near the courtroom entrance. She was too far away from where the bloody message was found. I know, because I put her there. So you're saying that the victim's body was nowhere near where the writing was? Precisely. It is as plain as day that she could not have written it. It's true that the body was discovered near the entrance of the courtroom. Please have a look at the crime scene photo. As you can see, there is blood on the rubble near the victim's body. She must have died after hitting her head there. Hmm. Hmm. That's what I said. I see. All right then, Mr. Wright. You may cross-examine the witness. Do you have what it takes to take my infallible testimony apart? Um... I sure will try my very gosh darn bestest. So we took care of this. Uh, we determined that Juniper was holding wrapping rhino or whatever. So looking at this picture real quick, uh, she hit her head. There's blood on the piece of rubble there, which looks like, ouchie, that would have hurt. Tone is claiming that she couldn't have written that message because she died here next to a bloody rubble piece, which, uh, do we have a picture of the map? We do. And the bloody rubble would have been in the left side with the, the, the I was going to say train tracks. Those aren't train tracks. The, 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 the support beams or whatever you call them. The steel beams. I guess I'll have to press. I'll press. Sorry. I said I wasn't going to and now I have to because I don't know where I'm supposed to press. Why were you the first person on the scene? To secure the area. It is regulation of bomb disposal specialists to enter first. In other words, you had the opportunity to alter the bloody writing then, didn't you? Well... Ingiari! Ingiari! Mr. Wright, please don't interrupt! Mr. Tony is about to give testimony that will show just how wrong your reasoning is! 
Dang, I think he was just about to say something interesting, too. No bloody writing. You were able to tell this even with those goggles on? Oh yeah, you wouldn't know because the case was in the way. With these goggles, there is no way I could have missed something like that. I can see quite well with them. In fact, I can see every hair on your spiky head. Oh, you have a few grays, Mr. Wright. Yeah, it only makes it more handsomer. What's the problem with gray hair? It's not like I have multiple because of gen genetics. Well, we're proud of the gray hairs. Nick, don't you even fret. Poor Mr. Wright. You're always working so hard keeping our office together. Wait a minute. I don't have any gray hairs. It's okay. Embrace. He'd be, he'd be so handsome with full head of gray hair. Come on. Just kidding. Well, you make me feel old. I, I object to the witness's attempt to prematurely give me gray hair. <laughs> Mr. Tonic, this court frowns upon untoward comments on a person's hair or lack thereof. I'm sensing a great wave of sorrow coming from the judge. Can you imagine the judge with hair? It would look so fucked up. <laughs> I apologize, Your Honor. May I please continue my testimony? Anyway, there is no- oh wait, uh, Detective Arm could have written it. If she didn't write it, then who do you propose did? Mr. Justice, of course. Just before dying, he wrote the name of his attacker, Juniper Woods. A final message from your poor subordinate! Poor Mr. Justice. I'm starting to get all misty yard. Uh, Apollo is not dead, folks. <laughs> it's like I can hear him now, but now he is truly dead. So, how can you be so sure it was a detective arm who wrote the message? It is very simple. She had struck her head on rubble and died near the courtroom entrance. Oh, oh, sorry, this is part of the, this is part of the testimony. Do you imagine she was thrown back by the force of the blast? A bomb can inflict damage not only from the explosion itself, but also substantial secondary damage from the blast wind. Detective Arm unfortunately hit her head on some rubble. It's stated in her autopsy report as well. Cause of death, trauma to the back of the head. Ah, oh, the autopsy report. I better take another look at that. Oh, oh, I just remembered, even without having seen it, uh, it mentioned something. No, just that's a lie. I was thinking of the transport case. I was thinking that something had mentioned metal alloy something, but I think that's about the transport case, not about the autopsy report, but we'll look at it. Trauma to the back of the head caused by impact with a flat object. There it is. Okay. Oops, I pressed the wrong button. Fuck, it's okay. Isn't it possible she could have crawled to the area of the bloody message? If that were true, then how did she return to the spot near the entrance? Maybe she crawled back after writing it? Hmm. A woman can't crawl. <laughs> hey, did this guy just hunt me? Would you like to get down on the floor and give us a demonstration of your theory? Oh, you would like that, wouldn't you? Huh? N no, thank you. Autopsy report, baboo. Hey! You are a terrible liar, Mr. Tonate. Take a look at this autopsy, specifically the part about Detective Arm's head injury. Cause of death. Trauma to back of head caused by impact with a flat object. Yes, what about it? Now take a good look at the bloody piece of rubble. It's sharp and pointed. <laughs> Hey, you're right, boss. Boss? <laughs> you're right, boss. <laughs> it is pointy. Just like your hair. And my hair. And everyone's hair. Except for the judge. He's not pointy. There is all, isn't it? What could be the meaning of this contradiction? I believe it means the victim did not hit her head on this piece of rubble. The blood stain you see is just another fabrication. Its purpose is to mislead us into thinking the victim died near the courtroom entrance. Fabricated? Oh, what? Like, like the, the the killer like rub her head on it? That's fucked up. Are, are you claiming the culprit moved the victim's body? That's exactly what I'm claiming. The victim hit her head at some other location, most likely on the floor or some other flat surface. And this location was somewhere near where the bloody writing was found. In that case, she definitely could have written the message. Your Honor, I have the result of the blood stain analysis. Oh, very good timing. Oh, I sound just like you, Bear. Ho oh, ho, I must be so young and handsome. Let's take a look. Hmm. According to the report, the message was written in Detective Arm's blood. And, as the defense claims, only the parts of the message that were added afterwards were written in Mr. Justice's blood. 
it would appear that the defense's assertions is correct after all. Haha! -ha, fuck you, Tonate! Yes, you did it! You were right, boss! Now I have to drive it home. <laughs> what am I, a car chauffeur? I'll have to take a good look at the bloody writing analysis later. No, we can look at it now. Why does that have to be later? A report that proves that writing was done in Detective Arm's blood. You want me to look carefully? Is are we looking carefully at the part where there's like a piece of uh, there's clearly clearly writing at the far right, but there seems to be a missing rock. <laughs> Mr. Tornick, it is now apparent that you have told several lies to this court. What are you, a liar or something? I hope you have some sort of explanation for yourself. Fine, I will confess. You will? But then. Why are you so calm? This time, I will tell the truth. Sure you will. Imagine, imagine if like one of the killers in an Ace Attorney game just like outright admits to killing someone and then the case just ends after just one cross-examination and it's done. Like that's it, they make it that simple. And then you're left wondering like, that can't be it. There's gotta be more to it. There's gotta be more to it. And there never is the truth. It is true that Detective Arm wrote my ID number. She very plainly wrote L-100-1-15-1-1, uh, you know, my number. I was shocked. But I did not detonate the bomb. Detective Arm must have mistaken me for the real bomb. Not wanting to be accused, I moved the body and covered the writing. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> I love how they're just, he's just going to assume that they'll believe him when he says that I went out of my way to move things around in the crime scene that implicated me. My B. Sorry's RC. So it is your assertion that you merely moved the body. Is that it? That is correct. I did not kill Detective Arm. Oh, well, if that's all you did, then. Wait a minute. That in itself is a criminal act. <laughs> Glad to see you finally crossed that finish line, Your Honor. Hey, give him a break. He's old. Very well done. Your cross examination, please, Mr. Wright. I can't remember if the last time we played this, if they had questioned the fact that with the writing that there's clearly like a letter that's that's missing because the, someone took out the rubble. Like, did they bring that up? L-1015R? And it was written after the bomb went off in the courtroom? Correct. I didn't know why she would write it, so that sent me into a panic. Hmm. Sounds like you were in quite a tizzy. If I were in his shoes, I guess it would have psyched me out too. I can't imagine coming across the message Sykes written in blood. If I saw gasp and pain written in blood, it certainly made me gasp and pain. You get it? Because I'm gasp and pain. It's a funny joke. Rest assured, Mr. Tonnet. I understand how you must have felt. And so you discovered your ID number written in blood at the sea. And? That is right. I saw it with my own eyes. It very clearly said... L-10015R. Detective Arm must have mistaken me for the real bomber. Yeah, because you look just like Juniper Woods. By mistaken, do you mean you had nothing to do with the explosion? That is correct. That is why I was so shocked when I saw my ID number. The victim may have suspected Mr. Tony for no reason other than the fact that, as a bomb specialist, he was in charge of the bomb. In other words, a false accusation. It's vocational... Right? Discrimination, I say! Did I say that word right? I don't know. I've never used that word before. Hmm. I do not support discrimination of any car. Well, spoken, your honor. If the victim had been found to be killed with a gavel, Mr. Blue Suit over there probably would have pinned the crime on you! Reward? Well, that just wouldn't do. Mr. Wright, if you dare try to pin anything on me, I will find you in contempt of court with my gavel. But I've never even tried to harm a hair on- or, or the strand on your beard, your honor. Well said, Mr. Payne, because I am so closely associated with Box. I was afraid I would be prosecuted if anyone saw the bloody writing. You didn't think to clean away the bloody writing? I didn't have time. By the time I found the message, the blood was already drawn. The police were waiting just outside for me to secure the room. And I still had to move the body. I was in a panic. With no time to spare, I temporarily covered the writing with my case. Didn't you think the police would find it during their investigation? Regulation stipulates only specialists may touch the transport cases. Because of the danger, you see. I thought I would clean up the writing once they were finished. My bad. I'm surprised they didn't tell you to move it out of the way. 
But maybe that's that would be messing with the crime scene. My bad. Does he really think that will just magically smooth everything over? This guy is something else. And I don't believe Detective Arm's dying message was just some mistake. He won't wriggle out of this that easily. So I'm gonna to try to present something, but I'm I don't know if this is gonna work. Oh, okay, it's good. I just want to make doubly sure that L10015R is really what you saw written in blood. Yes, it very clearly said L10015R. But that's odd, because that's not what I see. What on earth are you babbling on about now? Wasn't it you who claimed that the bloody writing was his ID number in the first place? Take a good look at the photo in the bloody writing analysis. Now tell me. Does it really say L10015R? Something is missing, isn't it? And that something is the final R. Oh, okay. So we didn't bring it up. Where is the reading of this, Mr. Torrage? Hmm. Oh, 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 right. Now I remember. There was no R on the end. It, it was just a slip of the finger. My bad. Come back, my beautiful contradiction. Oh, come on, Nick. Like, do you need to get glasses? Like, look closely. You can see a little dabble of blood at the end. Mr. Wright, I'm not so sure it was just a simple slip of the finger. You have something for me, Athena? I sense that he's extremely agitated, almost panicked. Hmm, he does look pretty flustered. Nice. He's got nice, sharp teeth. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears there was nothing more than a mere mistake. I don't know. Did you really just make a typo? What about that R? Did Mr. Tony really see it? He actually saw it. Maybe Mr. Tony really did see the R. But there was no R anywhere in that bloody writing. What's going on here? Huh? Now that I take another good look at the photo, I think maybe? That's it! That was more high-pitched than it needed to be. What is it now, Mr. Wright? Are you trying to imitate Apollo and his cords of steel? Oh, I missed it, Penny. <laughs> I've got it. So that's what happened. A slip of the finger. Is that really all it was? Because I don't think so. I propose that Mr. Tony really did see the letter R. But, but he said he didn't. And he wouldn't lie. <laughs> the photo clearly shows that there's no R. No, Your Honor. Actually, just the opposite is true. The photo shows that Mr. Tony actually could have seen the R. If you're going to make that claim, then you better be able to point out what you mean. What part of the photo shows that Mr. Tony could have seen the R? <laughs> Please look here, to the right of the five. Do you see a little bit of red? Oh, I see it! Just on the edge of where the floor is broken up! That's the R that Mr. Tony saw. It's true that the witness wears some very, very odd goggles. But that doesn't mean his eyesight is bad, nor his brain power. What part of that little smudge looks like an R to you? But what Mr. Tony saw wasn't that little smudge, dipshit. There was a whole and complete R written there. Before the floor was damaged by the explosion. Oh, oh right. I, I guess that would make sense that that is the idea that she died. Wrote that message. The bomb after that exploded? The bomb exploded after that, I mean? Why did I say it like that? And then he came in, assessed the situation, saw the writing, and then did all the fabricating, the hiding the evidence and stuff. Oh, well that explains it. Huh? Care to explain what you mean? Because you just proposed that everything happened in the exact opposite order. Yep, because that's the way it really went down. Oh, oh, I'm fucking stupid, dumb bitch ass motherfucker. <laughs> they were, they thought the entire time she died to the explosion. The timing of when the R was written turned everything about this case around. Now then, if the floor was damaged by the explosion, when was the message written? Before explosion. With the bloody message running off the edge of the damaged floor like that. We can only conclude that it was written before the explosion. But that's ridiculous! You can't write things before they blow up! If that were true, it overturns your own premise. That's right, it does. In fact, it turns everything upside down. The victim was not killed by the explosion in the courtroom. She was killed before the explosion ever occurred. Now, now I'm wondering what the time, what the, how the, how it all went down, because I can't remember. Order! Order on the court! 
preposterous claim is that? Have you forgotten that the victim's body was found at the scene of the explosion? True, but consider the scenario. She was hit on the head and killed before the explosion, or even before the trial began. Her body was subsequently placed in the courtroom ruins after the bombing occurred. That way, it could be made to look like she was the victim of the blast. What? How could you? How could she? You like? Was there no thought about the fact that like she's not covered in dust or rubble or anything or, like sediment or like burn marks from the explosion? Sounds like we had a better look into what the victim was doing before the trial. Mr. Prank, did anyone see Detective Arm before the trial? Let's see. According to the police report, ah, here it is. One person, one person saw the victim before the trial, and that person was Tetane. Wait, what? No, no one besides Mr. Tony sort of victim. Th th that appears to be the case, Your Honor. Oh, well, the color me surprised. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> I would now ask the court to recall something. Specifically, Mr. Tonate's words from yesterday. It was when Detective Arm and I were transporting the box. Oh my! Mr. Tonate, just before the trial, you were with the victim. The two of you were together at the scene of the crime, courtroom number four. <laughs> Your Honor, the defense requests new testimony from Mr. Tonate. We wish to hear what he has to say about his whereabouts just before the trial. Mr. Torrent, your testimony, please. My testimony, there is no need for whale six cycle of XQC, herb the boar, V8 splash. He's completely unnerved, Mr. Wright. You must have hit the nail on the head. Uh, because, opt. All I did was transport the, the bomb to the delivery courtroom. I already t t told you, Powatol of the Outcast. Hey! A gag blast this thing! I was only in the courtroom with the victim because of our work! I swear I was only transmitting the bomb there! You and the victim were alone together at the scene of the crime. In other words, you certainly had the opportunity to commit murder, did you not? Tsk, tsk! Do you always leave yourself so open to attacks, Mr. Wright? What now, Mr. Payne? I don't have time for your stupid shit. Yes, Mr. Tony may have had the opportunity to kill Detective Arm, but an important piece of your assertion is missing. What important piece? The murder weapon! What you claim was used to kill the victim? M Mr. Payne has a point. What was Juniper's murder weapon? She didn't have anything flat on her, except for her sunflower. Even if Mr. Tony had had the chance, without a weapon, we can't accuse him of the crime. Well, Mr. Tonight. You. Uh, oh, yes, yes, that's, 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 that's right. I didn't have any sort of thing that could be used as a murder weapon on me. My God, the details and the shading on his face look crazy. Look at that. Man, props to the animators that animated this freak. I hate it, but I can't stop staring at it. <laughs> I couldn't possibly have killed the detective arm. It, did he really have nothing he could use as a murder weapon? Hmm. hmm. What is it, Athena? Just looking over the victim's autopsy report. I'm hoping there's something in here that can point us in the right direction. Well, it does say that she died from trauma to the back of the head with a flat object. Yeah, and to inflict that specific kind of injury. All you would need is a flat surface, right? A heavy blunt object with a flat surface could definitely be our murder weapon. Oh my god, Tetsune carried his entire transport case and hit her over the head with it! That fiend! Well, Mr. Wright, can you indicate for the court what was used to kill Detective Arm? I believe I can. Believe being the key word here. It's okay, we all believe in you. You, you can? <laughs> then please do so now. What did Mr. Tony have that could have been used as a murder weapon? <laughs> It'd be really funny if I just showed this. <laughs> <laughs> like he somehow just lifted his that'd be really impressive but we also don't know how heavy it is does this say the it weighs 12 pounds i'm trying to i don't even know how heavy 12 pounds is can you like whip a thing that's 12 pounds and kill a person with it <laughs> mr tonate you say you didn't have anything that could be used as a weapon but in fact you had the perfect thing 
Uh, I don't know if I would call it perfect, but... What? What the devil are you talking about? You had this. That's the bomb. I thought you were trying to prove that the victim wasn't killed by the bomb blast. The bomb blast? No. But I believe Candace's arm was killed with this bomb. Because this is the blunt object that delivered a fatal blow to her head. Ah! My eyes! Please recall the description of Detective Arm's head wound. Trauma to the back of the head caused by impact with a flat object. We assume this injury was sustained when, she, when her head hit the floor. But a blow from any flat side of this bomb would produce the same exact wound pattern, except for the part where there's a light, I think, but, you know. I want to eat the swords that are so bad, but I won't come off. You don't want to finish it off with the hole? What's with him? Then show me some proof! Where's the evidence that I hit the victim with the bomb? Eck. He's right. I don't have anything decisive. Did you find any of the victim's blood on the bomb? That would be decisive proof. But too bad! The bomb is ruined to bits! It's long gone! Boom! Game over! Yeah! Ugh. Mr. Wright, is there really nothing on the bomb in the photo? I mean, there's a little crackle, but what's that gonna tell us, right? That could have just been dropped or something. Ah, I don't see any blood or anything. Wait, the timer display is a little broken here. Maybe it broke when it made contact with Detective Arm's head. That's definitely a distinct possibility. But unless we find a fragment with the victim's blood on it, it's not going to count. Ugh, I guess you're right. Setting off the bomb, Tony managed to obliterate all traces of the murder weapon. What in the world do I do now? I can't believe they haven't thought to consider looking in the transport case. Surely he could have potentially hidden anything in there, right? You should at least check it. At times like this, I've got to change gears and look at things in a different way. Instead of looking for the things that he wasn't able to hide, I should be looking for a way to expose the things he did hide. Ted Tony murdered the detective arm before the trial started. Then he placed her body in the courtroom after the bomb went off. Which means there was something he needed to keep hidden until then. And I think I have just the thing. Time to present the photo that shows exactly what Mr. Tony had to hide. Huh? I assume he's talking about the body, right? Your Honor, there's something we've all been overlooking. If the murder took place before the trial, then Mr. Tony would have had to hide the body somewhere during the trial. Hey, you're right! And if we can figure out where that hiding place was. Exactly. We might be able to find some evidence we can bin him down with. Where could Mr. Tony have hidden the body during the trial? Up his but It must have been an elephant, right? Wait. A box big enough for a body. A box that was in the courtroom the whole time. A box nobody would touch if they thought there was a bomb in it. Mr. Tony! What is it? Do you finally have some decisive evidence to show me? No, you're the one who's going to show it to me. I can't, I'm tired. You heard me. Now show me what's inside that bomb transport case. What? Why? No, there's no need. It's only Twizzlers and you can't have them. I've got him now. Just before the trial, you killed the victim with a blunt object. And then you placed her body in the ruins of the courtroom after the bomb went off. Clearly, you were trying to make it look like she died in the explosion. But where was the body hidden during the trial? Oh, I hadn't thought about that. The answer is right there. Inside a box made of thick alloy plating that could withstand any impact. No, 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 that was completely false. If it's false, then you should have no objections to showing us the transport case. So, let's open it up and take a look inside, shall we? Turns out it's just a bunch of porn magazines that he doesn't want to show because he's embarrassed. Oh. Let's not. Not if you value your life. What? What's he up to now? 
Remain calm and listen carefully. This bomb will detonate in five minutes. What? Huh? I repeat, this HH-3000 will detonate in five minutes. What's going on? Your Honor, I recommend you adjourn this crime before this bomb goes off. Mr. Tornit, are you... Are you threatening me? <laughs> I am the one who can disable this bomb. If you do not want to die, your only option is to listen to me. But Mr. Tornit, didn't you just say that's a training model? A fake to practice on? You wouldn't hurt little old cute me, right? I'm such a genteel man. <laughs> I did, but I also lied. This is the real deal. This is the HH-3000. But the HH-3000 was used to blow up courtroom number four, wasn't it? How do you know it was the real HH-3000 that blew up courtroom number four? They're saying that as if you can't make multiple models of the same item. What? Huh? huh? The bomb that blew up in the courtroom was a different one. One that I made. What? Then are we to take that as a confession on your part? Take it any way you would like. Just before the trial, I took the HH-3000 out of the stuffed animal and put my own bomb into it. That was the bomb that exploded and destroyed courtroom number four. M Mr. Torrent, please be reasonable! Do you really expect us to believe a crazy story like that? The HH-3000. It is so unique, I have never seen anything like it. It is so unique that I could not replicate the detonation mechanism. No, that doesn't seem correct at all. So, I just have to have it. And now I'm gonna let it break and just <laughs> blow up because I love it so much. Besides, did anyone look inside the stuffed animal during the trot? Did anyone try to see if it really was the HH-3000 in there? I did. What of it? Maybe I did. Who are you gonna tell me? Who's How are you gonna tell me I didn't? I, I must confess. No one opened a stuffed animal to check. So, so there really is a possibility that the bomb was switched out? No, not a possibility. A certainty. I did it. One moment. Did we do anything with this switch? We haven't made use of this uh, evidence yet, so I wonder when this is supposed to come up. So he's had a real bomb with him this whole time? You had better get out of here while you can. We do not have much time. I ain't no bitch. If I want to get exploded by a bomb, I'll get exploded by a bomb. Order! Order on the court! I'm out of here! It's gonna blow up! Yeah, get out. We're not cowards. We're staying here. You four are still here? Well, well. Armor and you break. <laughs> it just wouldn't do for the judge presiding over this court to run. Even though you've had this experience happen to you and it literally blew up, so the fact that you're still sitting here is actually quite commendable, and I applaud you for your bravery. It, no one would have blamed you if you had wanted to run. But that horrible explosion the other day! The judge looks like he's about to book it for the nearest exit any second. I mean, he's still sitting here. He's good. As for Mr. Payne. <laughs> and he's off. Mr. Wright, what do we do? Ugh, it'd be pretty pathetic to run now, wouldn't it? But, but the bomb might really go off! Only three more minutes, folks. Ah, oh, dang it. I shouldn't have advanced, because I saw the clock was going down. If I had stayed there long enough, would it have continued going down until zero? It probably wouldn't have. It probably would have stopped at some point. Is that bomb really the HH-3000? What should I do? <laughs> run like a yellow-bellied chicken. What the hell is a yellow-bellied chicken? I'm gonna stand my ground. I can't run now. Well, it's been fun, but I will be going now. With my dear, dear H is 3000 natural. Oh, and by the way, I would advise against having me follow. Even with no remote switch, this bomb can still be triggered manually. If I think I'm being followed, I will detonate on the spot. If we keep everyone away from you, we'll just make you detonate and then you'll just blow up and then you'll be gone. Good riddance, right? Farewell. As if we're just gonna let him walk away. Attack! You're not going anywhere, Tetonate! Oh. Your Honor, there's no reason to be afraid. That bomb is a fake. 
How does he know? Is he also a bomb specialist? Oh, are you sure, Mr. Wright? More of your famous bluffing. Even at the risk of your own life. They're all, they've always been at the risk of my life. M -m 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 Mr. Wright, none of your bluffing now. N not at a time like this. Lives are on the line here. I'm not bluffing. And I have proof. I do? You do? Yes, of course you are. It's right here in the photo of the bomb. Clear as day. Proof that Mr. Tonight's bomb is not the real HH-3000. Really? I will have done immediately. Oh, oh, it's the crack. It's the crack on, crack on the display. He just showed us the, the timer. There was no crack on it. Where is the proof that Mr. Tonight is holding the blah, 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 blah. Oh, what's that? You got a tickle on your nose, little fancy. Don't worry, I got you. Tickle your tummy. Okay, sorry. The display for the timer on the bomb in the photo is broken. Most likely, it broke when Mr. Tony used the bomb to attack Detective Arm. But the display on the bomb in front of us is not broken. Oh, you're right. Therefore, this is not the real HH3000. Mr. Tony was clearly lying when he said he switched out the bomb in the stuffed animal. The real HH-3000 blew up in courtroom number four. This bomb is nothing more than a fake, a model used for training purposes. You should have said that it was another bomb. Why did he have to say that it was, it was the real HH-3000? You could have said it was like HH-3001. Fear not, your honor. I will examine the inside of the bomb transport case myself. You don't have the key. Yes, please do that, Mr. Rice. No, stop! He would just give away the key. Oh, it's cushion in there. How nice. What, what is that? Is that blood stain? Just as I expected. Your lies have all been blown to bits, Mr. Tonate. I'm confident DNA analysis on this blood stain will confirm that it's Detective Arm's blood. And that those results will conclusively prove that you murdered Detective Arm. <laughs> How about it, Mr. Tonight? Think you can dismantle this size of evidence? I think not, because it's not physical. I guess the I guess the transfer case is physical, but you know what I mean. Dismantle it. <laughs> You're too late! You missed your chance to run, so now you're out of time! This agent that is about to explode! Don't try to th threaten us, Mr. Tonate. I've already proved that your bomb is a fake. It's real! This bomb is a real thing, I tell you! It's real! <laughs> Stop laughing! <gasps> Mad bomber? Party of one. There's no time left. It's going to blow. I have to disarm it. I have to take it apart. I can't dismantle it anymore. I can't take it apart in a minute. I can take it apart bombs. I can dismantle them all. Dismantle, 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 It's funny, I was looking at him earlier thinking he had, looks like he has a strong chin. It's a good thing he does. <laughs> Ow! Ew! <laughs> Ew! <laughs> Ew, his eyes. <laughs> Attempt failed. I guess it is a training model. I don't need my training model to- <laughs> I remember this, this, this is the first time I played it. I hate his eyes. I hate when eyes just don't look normal. He's just staring at me in the void with those voids. It's so creepy. <laughs> I get scared over the stupidest things. I'm not looking at his face. <laughs> it's a lover! My mind has been blown to pieces! It's all that stupid woman's fault. I was selling the bombs at the start of the black market. When I tried to take the sword, she just had to notice, didn't she? How did you? S how are you selling them? Wouldn't the government or someone confiscate them after you've um taken them apart? That's weird. She confronted me in the courtroom for that day. 
That's why. That's, that's why I had no choice. If I knew what I was doing, I hit her. It's all our fault. While I was looking for a place to hide her body, she left a message in her own blood. The trial was about to start, so I didn't have time to clean it up. And now all this. Oh, his eyes are like bombs. I still hate them, though. I thought for sure I could sit Skyzer dead with an explosion. <laughs> then a stupid defense attorney started sticking his nose into my business. After my testimony yesterday, I went to corner number four and... I found that kid all up in my bomb transport case. That's when I snuck behind him and... Bam! When that idiot police arrested that little girl. I thought for sure I could pin it all on her. Why? Oh, why? Okay, he's gone. <laughs> I, was just, I was like literally staring down the entire time. I couldn't look at him. Tartaric. You are hereby under arrest on suspicion of the courtroom bombing and the assault of Mr. Justice. Your innocence or guilt will be determined at a later trial. Now then, I see that members of the public have returned to the gallery. What up, pussies? Welcome back. One person, however, seems to still be running far, far away. Be that as it may, I will now announce Mr. Juniper Wood's verdict. Hooray! Hooray! Yay, Juni! Congratulations! You are innocent! Yay! Wow! Order's a drone! I guess, I guess maybe we did do something with the remote? I don't... I don't feel like we did anything with the remote. But we ended up not using it. You did it, boss! Yeah, I guess we managed to pull it off somehow. So many mysteries cleared up all at once! It was amazing! It just sort of worked out that way, didn't it? That's not the kind of thing that usually just works out. You made it happen. And the way that mean old prosecutor hightailed it out of here, that was great. Mr. Wright, Nina, thank you for everything you did for me. Oh, I'm so happy for you, Juni. Now you can go back home to the forest in peace. I hope the both of you will come and visit me there sometime. That would be nice. Thank you for the invitation. Hmm, I don't know, Mr. Wright. I'm not so sure you could make it all the way to Junie's house. How high up do you live again, Junie? Um, around 3,000 feet, I think. What? That's no force. That's a mountain. Well, I mean, if she managed to get down here, it's fine. We'll just follow her. But you know, boss, there's something that still bothers me about the case. One little mystery we never got around to solving. Oh, that? Yeah, I was wondering about that too. Is this the unsolved mystery you're thinking of? W was it this? Was it the thing that I just mentioned? The remote switch, right? Yeah, I wonder where it disappeared to. Maybe Miss Tony just got rid of it somewhere. Yeah, it is a pretty th big thing to leave unsolved though. Well, let's leave it up to the police to find. For now, we should be celebrating our not guilty verdict. I guess you're right. Hey, I know. Junie, shall we go report the good news? You know, to that certain someone. Okay. Huh? Her grandmother? No, silly! To Apollo! Oh, right. Well, why'd you say it like that? <laughs> well, why don't we all go to the hospital together to see him? Great idea! I bet he's bored out of his mind. Okay. And so... The courtroom bombing case came to a close. But the next trial was just over the horizon. There's never a dull moment with so many lawyers in the office, that's for sure. Apollo Justice, Athena Sykes, and me, Phoenix Wright. Between the three of us, there's no case we can't solve. When our powers combine, we're an unstoppable team. At least, that's what I believed. I don't even remember what the next case is, but all that changed with what Apollo said to us that day. It was something that would put my faith in us to the ultimate test. Apollo, you look fine. <laughs> 
うことですか理由を聞かせてもらえるかなどうしてもやらなくちゃならないことがあるんです<laughs> you can't leave. I didn't approve your leave. Odoroki Senpai. Do you stay on Nakoto? Still love that this courtroom is not cordoned off at all. That people could just willingly walk in here and get emotional in here. <laughs> what happened to you, Apollo? Ever since you put that jacket on, you've changed. And now, for whatever reason, all my mind keeps doing is returning to the day I first met you. We had tackled our first case together, he and I, this past spring. And as we did, I came to know who he is and how he thinks. It was a very peculiar case, one in which the victim was killed by a mythical creature. Wait a minute, I just had a thought. Oh no, is that- no, is that this game? I was thinking about a specific case, but I don't remember if it was this game. Uh, no, return to the games menu. I'm just gonna spoil it for myself. Oh, it is the one that I was thinking of. Don't look! Don't look, guys! Don't look at the bottom! Don't look at the bottom, you'll spoil yourself! <laughs> I guess that is it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in. I hope that this was entertainment entertainment. I hope this was considered entertainment. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it to some degree. If you did, uh, you know, thank you. I have had enough of trying to generate likes, comment, and subscribe. So I'm just going to say thank you. If you want to do all that, you would have done it of your own volition. This ain't, uh, this, is, this ain't 2005. We ain't new to these parts. So I will just continue doing whatever I feel like it, and we'll continue playing this game as I please.